Good morning, friends. Good morning. Welcome to Go Stand and Preach Live. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings. Shannon, good morning. Mr. Charles, good morning. Stephanie, good morning. I work a lot. All right, Stephanie, so glad you're here this morning. Dustin, good morning to you. Miss Mercy, good morning to you. The Remnant, good morning to you. Terry Ann, good morning to you. Stan, good morning to you. Mr. Charles, good morning to you. Good morning, beloved. Beloved, good morning, Ma. Good morning, good morning. Thank you guys for double tapping that screen. Thank you for sharing the live. Thank you for your comments and your input. <laughs> Guten Tag, yes. <laughs> Casper, good morning. Grandma, good morning. Ma, good morning. Part two. Part two of a healthy mind. Part two of a healthy mind this morning. Friends, I'm going to give you some updates, some announcements this morning. Uh, we go live Monday through Fridays, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here at Ghost and Preach Live. Uh, these lives are reposted over at YouTube at backslash go stand and preach. Uh, so yesterday's live and this week's lives are posted over at YouTube at backslash go stand and preach. Um, follow us on all other platforms uh, so that we can have some backup in the event that we end up on TikTok punishment. Uh, Instagram at go stand and preach. Facebook at go stand and preach. YouTube at Go Stand and Preach. TikTok, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we go live. I'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well um, for our live discussions where we bring folks up and have some good, good discussions. We, the Lord's been blessing us this week uh, with some very good discussions and good topics, I believe anyway. Um, I pray those who have been a part of the lives this week, hope it's been a blessing. We, we spoke about coping with grief. And now we've been dealing with um, just mental health in a general sense. And we're going to do a little review this morning before we get into uh, God's word uh, this morning. Uh, friends, we are 
not one dimensional beings. Amen. Uh, we have faith, which is great, uh, but we have to keep our minds healthy. Uh, there's maintenance, there's upkeep. Amen. Things we need to do. Mm hmm. Mm. Do Dozer Dobi. You should go over to Go Stand and Preach at YouTube and watch yesterday's meeting. Yesterday's meeting. I'm going to do a little review of that this morning, but yesterday's meeting will definitely answer your question. Practical. And there's, there's a link. Did anyone visit? Did anyone go to the, the, the Neil Netley Health link that I posted in the, um, in the YouTube video? Did anyone go check that out yesterday? Has anyone had a chance to check that out, to go to that link and see the resources there? Uh, it was on cognitive behavior therapy, which I'm going to speak about this morning as we begin. Good morning, Andrew. <clears throat> Sister Fernandez, good morning to you. Mm-hmm. Self-doubt, mm-hmm. Jennifer Lucas, good morning to you. That link is inside the YouTube video. So you have to go over to YouTube backslash go stand and preach. YouTube backslash go stand and preach. And in the video description, um, the video yesterday on mental health, I have the link there posted. So you can go there. Momo, good morning to you. Glad you made it, my friend. We are continuing our study uh, on mental health, having a healthy mind, part two. Earlier this week, we dealt with coping with loss. As many of you know, I lost my wife of almost 20 years uh, to cancer uh, a little bit over two years ago now, um, March 23rd, 2021. She was 37 years old, friends. So we discussed coping with grief, coping with loss earlier this week. And now we're continuing to follow that up, dealing, speaking about mental health in a general sense. Okay, in a general sense, let us have a word of prayer this morning. Gracious, kind, loving, merciful, heavenly father, thank you for bringing your children here this morning. And we desire us to have healthy minds. Minds free from sin, minds free from guilt, minds free from shame. Uh, minds that are based in thoughts that are based in reality. Father, please come and speak to us this morning in your word. Give us uh, eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts that are soft. Give us the new person in mind that you want us to have this morning. We ask that the Holy Ghost will be our teacher. And we pray all these things and ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Lord and our King. Amen. All right, friends, we are. <laughs> I love it. I love the prayer. The prayer, the prayer always knocks them out. <laughs> Mental health. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Thank you for double tapping our screen. Thank you for the gifts this morning. Uh, remember, there is a fake account out there floating around pretending to be go stand and preach. Don't give those folks any money. If you want to support this ministry, you can do so over at gostandandpreach.org. And there's a donate button there for you to do that. Don't give these uh, fake accounts any money, friends. Uh, for as Proverbs chapter 23 Proverbs chapter 23, Proverbs chapter 23, <clears throat> verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man or woman thinketh in his mind, so are they. Okay, Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as a man or woman thinketh in their mind, so are thee. A review of yesterday, we spoke about cognitive behavior therapy. I believe Proverbs 23, verse 7 can practically, practically be experienced with cognitive behavioral therapy. I learned this um, when myself and my wife, when she was alive, we took a course, a class, a session remotely on depression and anxiety recovery. It was called a depression and anxiety recovery program put on by Dr. Neil Netley remotely, pre-recorded material and materials. And one of the components we touched on during that series, during those, uh, that course, was cognitive behavioral therapy. It is a form of psychological treatment that has been demonstrated to be effective for a range of problems, friends, including depression, 
anxiety, disorders, alcohol and drug use problems, marital problems, eating disorders, and severe mental illness. Numerous research studies suggest that cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, leads to significant improvement in functioning and quality of life. In many studies, CBT has been demonstrated to be, a, a, be as effective as or more effective than other forms of psychological therapy or psychiatric medications, friends. CBT. All right. Now, here are some of the principles. All right. About CBT that we covered yesterday. Psychological problems are based in part on faulty or unhelpful ways of thinking. Faulty or unhealthy ways of thinking. Okay. Two, psychological problems are based in part on learned patterns of unhealthy behavior. Three, people suffering from psychological problems can learn better ways of coping with them, thereby relieving their symptoms and becoming more effective in their lives. If you want to learn more about that, friends, go over to YouTube backslash go stand and preach and you can catch le yesterday's lecture on mental health, having a healthy mind part one where we delved into cognitive behavior therapy a little bit more in depth as we were expanding on the principle for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he in Proverbs 23, verse 7. And this morning, we're going to continue this now from the Bible. We're going to talk about mental health now from the scriptures. All right, we laid a good foundation yesterday with CBT. And now this morning, we're going to continue in the word of God. And we pick up this morning where we left off yesterday morning in Philippians 2, verse 5. Philippians 2, verse 5. Okay, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Okay. Philippians 2, chapter, I mean, Philippians 2, amen. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Thank you to all my moderators in here this morning. Appreciate you for all that you do. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 5 tells us, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So the scriptures, God extols us, encourages us to have the same mind that Christ had. And we discussed yesterday in closing that Jesus had a lot of reasons to be depressed. He had a lot of reasons to have anxiety. <laughs> Amen. He had a lot of reasons to be stressed. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of reasons to give up. A lot of reasons to not have the correct thoughts. He had been forsaken of his disciples. He had been called a liar and a devil by all those around him. Bezelbub, betrayed, forsaken, left for dead. He knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that he was going to suffer physical, mental, spiritual pain and anguish. And his greatest fear, if I could call it that, was that he was going to be separated from his father for the first time in his entire existence. He was going to die, friends. He was going to die. So, so many times people hop on the live here and they're, infatuated, overwhelmed with thoughts of dying. But God has done something very, very powerful for us. He has freed us from that fear in the person of Christ, in the hope of the resurrection. So we don't have to be afraid about dying because we shall live again if we are hid in Christ for all eternity. Um, Jesus had a lot of good reasons to have bad mental health. <laughs> Um, but he persevered and we saw yesterday that one of the ways that he overcame the key way he overcame when he had bad cognition, when he had evil thoughts enter his mind, when the devil tempted him in the wilderness, when the enemy was telling him to question his identity, to question who he was, to show himself and prove himself to be God. He quoted scripture. He quoted scripture. He went right to the Bible and the scriptures fortified his mind against lies, against cognitive distortions, against things that were not true. The truth truly sets you free. 
So as we saw yesterday, there are many cognitive distortions that we have, many lies that we tell ourselves, many untruths that we believe. And Jesus, he overcame with the word. So when in Philippians 2 verse 5, Paul says, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind did Jesus have? He had a mind that was fortified, bathed, saturated in scripture. Question for the chat this morning. How many of us have a mind that is bathed in scripture? How many of us have a mind that is bathed in the promises, saturated with the promises of God? How many of us have a mind that is stayed filled with the truth? Not a truth, not some truth, not your truth, but on the truth, the truth. You know where you came from. You know where you're going. You know the future about end time events. You know what happens when you die. You understand how much God loves you. These truths that I mentioned, friends, will guard against cognitive distortions. Will guard against cognitive distortions, friends. The lies that we tell ourselves and that others tell us. Red Chick, good morning. Marlene, good morning. We, we need to have the mind of Christ. So the first step in your mental health this morning. From scripture. Put on, have the mind of Christ. Let's delve more into the mind of Jesus. This morning. In Psalm. Oh, in Psalms, in Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8, look what the psalmist says. Psalms, chapter 40, verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Mm. So he's not doing his own will. The psalmist is not doing his own will, but he delights to do the will of my God. Yea, thy law is is within my heart, within my mind. I don't do my own will. I delight to do your will. In your law, I have hid. Your law is in my mind. Now, friends, what law is this? What is the law of God? What is the law that God spoke with his own mouth and wrote with his own finger? What law is that, friends? What is the law of God that God spoke with his own mouth and then wrote with his own finger? On tablets of stone. And then promise to write them on our hearts. Amen. So the psalmist is saying, I delight to do your will, O my God. What is the will of God? Even our sanctification. That is to live apart from sin. Friends, sin harms us. Sin harms the mind. Evil harms the mind. Debauchery harms the mind. Anger harms the mind. Harms the mind. Selfishness destroys the person selfishness destroys the person <coughs> everything excuse me everything in nature lives for something else to live gives of itself for something else to live there's almost a symbiotic relationship with a lot of with a lot a lot of things in nature okay the sun gives the tree gives the trees take the carbon monoxide and then they give us oxygen. You will find nothing, I believe, in nature and that lives unto itself except human beings. Human beings can make a decision to live unto themselves, live selfishly. And that's not the law of life, friends. The law of God is one of love. It is love spelled out. The Ten Commandments are a transcript of God's character. The psalmist says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. In Psalms 119, verse 34. Psalms 119 and verse 34. Psalms chapter 119 and verse 34. Give me understanding, the psalmist said, and I will keep thy law. Yea, I will observe it with my whole heart. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I will observe it with my whole heart. The law says thou shalt not commit adultery. It says thou shalt love thy mother and thy father. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. You obey reverence your mother and your father. Amen. It says you should not steal. You should not kill. You should not covet thy neighbor's goods. You should not lie. Friends, the commandments of God, the last six, tell us how to love our neighbors as ourselves. And there is peace in that. There is understanding in that. There is freedom and there is love in that. Amen? There is freedom and there is love in that, friends. Come on, let's get this off here. This is... Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 My son forget not my law But let thine heart keep my commandments Hold on Let your mind keep my commandments Write my law Put my law in your hearts Isaiah 51 verse 7 <clears throat> Hearken unto me ye that know righteousness Jesus is our righteousness He is our right doing the people in whose heart is my law, fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be afraid of their revilings. I would like to submit to everyone this morning <clears throat> that the mind of Christ was bathed in the will of God and the central figure, point, thought process was the law of God. Christ's mind was stayed on the commandments of God, on the law of God. Loving God with all his heart, mind, and soul, and loving his neighbor as himself. And he even took it a step farther, for further. He took it a step further. When he laid down his life for his friends. When he laid down his life for his enemies. Hmm. This is love. Love protected and shielded the mind of Christ. Keys to achieve good mental health. We're going to Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. We're going to speak about the keys to achieve and maintain good mental health. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God... Holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave <clears throat> you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity. Or love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, rule in your minds. To the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. <clears throat> what did we just read, friends? Mercy, kindness, humbleness, meekness. Long suffering, forbearing, forgiveness, love, peace, gratitude. That was mercies, kindness, humbleness, meekness, long suffering, forbearing, forgiveness. Come on. Love, peace, thankfulness. Ten. Ten principles. Here in Colossians chapter 12, 3, verses 12 through 15, to maintain, obtain good mental health. Let's speak about mercy, friends. Hmm. How many of us remember the old sanctuary service? How many of us remember the old sanctuary service? How many? How many? Of us remember the old sanctuary service, that tabernacle. There was an outer court where there was the labor and the altar of burnt sacrifice. Then you went into the holy place where there was a table of showbread, the candlesticks, and the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And then beyond the veil, beyond that second veil, there was a place called the most holy place. Mm -hmm. And inside the most holy place, there was the Ark of the Ten Commandments, which represented the throne of God. And inside the Ark were the law of God, the Ten Commandments, Aaron's rod that budded in a bowl of manna. And on top of the Ark was the mercy seat. Now, friends, you and I represent that sanctuary. We are the lively stones. This, this sanctuary is the plan of salvation. It also depicts the life of the Christian. The most holy place in the earthly sanctuary represents the mind. The inner sanctum of the mind. And inside the mind, there should be the law of God hid. In the heart, in the mind, the Ten Commandments. In the Ark of the Covenant. And above that should be mercy. Mm. Mercy, friends. There should be the law and mercy. Come on. Come on. Tell, tell, do, are you tracking with me? Are you tracking, friends? Hmm. Psalms 185.10 says, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Psalms, thank you so much for the gifts this morning. Psalms 85 verse 10, mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mercy, first key. Five. Matthew 5, verse 7. Okay? Hmm. The mercy seat. And you find that in Exodus 25, verse 3. If anyone's looking for that scripture. In Matthew 5, verse 7, ble Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, friends. How many of us need mercy this morning? <laughs> How many of us need mercy in our lives? We're talking about Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15, and we're talking about the keys to achieving and maintaining good mental health, and we need to be put on, put on bowels of mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 9, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Hmm. I have not come to call the righteous to, but the sinners to repentance. God says, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Come on, Momo. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. That was Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 in verse 13. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 13. This is when Jesus called Matthew. Mm -hmm. He saw Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs, tax collector. Come on, friends. We hate paying our taxes. It's ridiculous. We're overtaxed. We're taxed too much. And he came to pass as Jesus sat at food or dinner in his house. Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. He's sitting with tax, collector, tax collectors, publicans and sinners. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eat if you're massive with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that mean if I will have mercy and not sacrifice. We must recognize our physical condition. We must begin to recognize our thought patterns and understand that what we are believing a lot of the time is not the truth. And we need to be forgiving of ourselves and of others. Merciful to ourselves and also merciful to others. Kindness, friends. Kindness. We need kindness in order to, in order to have mental health. One of the things that I see that TikTok, social media is in need of, that humanity is in, is in need of, is kindness. Psalms 
So Shannon wants to know with mercy and not sacrifice. You could keep the letter of the law. You can you could you could keep the sacrificial system and believe you're fulfilling the law. But the essence of the law is mercy. The essence of the law is salvation. The essence of the law is redemption, forgiveness, restoration, not sacrificing animals. So in other words, Jesus came, bled and died as the Lamb of God. And that wasn't it. His death was intentional. His death had a purpose to reconcile the sinner back to God, to make the person new to bring healing, to bring restoration. It was not merely a dead sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as they sacrificed the lamb or the animals, it pointed to Christ, but Christ's death on the cross, it was more than just shed blood. It was healing and restoration and forgiveness and reconciliation. Kindness, all my ladies in the chat this morning, all the women here this morning, Proverbs 31, verse 26. I know you are all striving to be that Proverbs 31, verse 26 woman, that Proverbs 31 woman, I should say, Proverbs 31, and the internet is in need of kindness, friends. No lie. Social media is in need of kindness. People are so unkind, which is why we have so much mental illness. We're so miserable, so unhappy with ourselves that it spills into being unhappy with others. Look what it says here about the Proverbs 31 woman. She opened her mouth in wisdom, amen? Not in ratchetness. <laughs> this is not a ratchet woman. This is not a boss. No, let me say, not a boss babe in the sense of what we think of it. She, she, she was... She was, oh man, she was good at economics. She was good at trade. She was selling her purpose in the land. She was, but she, she wasn't usurping authority over God. She wasn't this independent free agent that was, that didn't care about her children and her husband and her household. No, she was up before they were. It says here, she opened her mouth in wisdom. Not in ignorance. She opens her mouth in wisdom. I love our girl sisters. They need us too. In her tongue is the law of kindness. What law is that? In her tongue is the law of what? Proverbs 31 verse 26. Is the law of what? Proverbs 31 verse 20. Come on. The law of kindness. Did you know there was a law of kindness, friends? A law? A law is something that needs to be kept. If you go out there, the speed limit says 60 and you're doing 80, you've broken the law. So when you're not kind, talk to me. So when we're not kind, we're breaking the law of God. We're, break, we're transgressing the law of kindness. This is why we don't have good mental health. Hmm. If you're thinking, if you're having evil thoughts, Chase, let me say something to you because it's a good question. If you're having unkind thoughts, evil thoughts, this is what I want you to understand. Evil thoughts can fly over your head the same way a bird can fly over your head. You can't prevent a bird from flying over your head, but you can prevent a bird from making a nest in your hair. You and I do not have to dwell and meditate upon evil things or evil thoughts. We can pray, get on our knees and pray immediately, lift up a prayer where you are, Sing a hymn, quote a scripture, mm. fortify your mind with the word of God. I shall set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those who turn aside and shall not cleave to me. For no temptation has overtaken me except that which is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow me to be tempted beyond what I'm able to bear, but will with the temptation also provide a means of escape. Mm. Amen. And the battle rages on. The battle is for the mind, friends. We're in Philippians chapter 2 now. Verses 1 through 8. Now we're speaking about humility. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. And we're speaking about humility now. 
How do we maintain and obtain good mental health? Colossians chapter, what was it? Three told us mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, charity, love, peace, and being thankful. And we're now speaking about humility in Philippians chapter two, verses one through eight. Let's get it, friends. We're going right to the word of God. God's word has everything we need for salvation in life. Mm hmm. You don't have to be a psychologist. You don't have to be a doctor. Hmm. If you will be an obedient, surrendered child of God, the God of the universe will lead you. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels of mercy, Philippians 2 verses 1 through 8, fulfill ye my joy that you be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind. Friends, a lot of times we don't have unity. Our families are, are in shambles. We don't like our parents. Sometimes they're not around. We don't get along with, with our parents. We don't get along with our children, our cousins, our aunties, nephews. We're not like-minded. We, we're not on one accord. This is a problem in your life, friends. Let nothing be done through strife. Let me repeat that. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Come on, let me read that again. Let nothing be done through vain, through strife, pardon me, or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. How much pain and misery would have gone away I'm thinking about slavery. I'm thinking about the, oh Lord, I'm thinking about Hitler. How much of that would have never happened if a man or a woman would esteem another better than themselves? Look not every man on his own things. Don't be selfish, but every man also on the things of others. What if I was more concerned about your well-being and your needs? How would the, how would the earth look, friends? How would human history look if people lived like this, if we actually followed and put into practice the word of God. Hmm. Let not every man <clears throat> look, not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I'm from New York City. And. I saw a video once where a man got stabbed to death, had gotten stabbed, was there bleeding out in the streets. And many New Yorkers stepped right over him and kept it moving. It's how we live. It's how we maintain our mental health by not talking to people, keeping our earphones on, our AirPods in, minding our business, not caring if another person lives or dies. Yeah, or, or, or today, if you are dying, they might stick a camera in your face and hit the record button. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I find it interesting. Mental health is probably one of the main things we're dealing with, or poor mental health is probably one of the main things we're dealing with in the West. And it seems like when this title is up, when we're discussing this, the views are down. Hmm. You know, makes us uncomfortable to have to acknowledge that we need help. Hmm. Going on, Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ. What was the mind of Christ? Listen. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, the God, the creator of all the universe, made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of his creation, man. 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Some of us are unwilling to die. We're unwilling to die in our marriages. We're unwilling to die in a conversation, in an argument. We have to always be right. We're not willing to serve. You know, the apostles, when it was time to wash feet, Notice how Jesus had to wash the feet. The Bible doesn't record that, oh, Peter, who always had something to say, said, no, Lord, let me wash the feet first, Lord. No, Lord, give me the apron. Let me wash feet. Nobody wanted to wash feet. None of the apostles wanted to wash feet. They, they weren't going to they weren't going to humble themselves like that. So the master, the king became a servant. Hmm. Come on. Come on, humility, servanthood. If, if Jesus, if God became a servant, then what about us? If God humbled himself, this was the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, come on, which was in Christ Jesus. He didn't kind of robbery to be equal with God, to, to enter into his Godship. He didn't, he didn't think it was too low for him to become a servant. He didn't think it was too low for him to put on fallen human flesh. He didn't think it was too low for him to humble himself and wash feet. Friends, imitate the pattern. Imitate the pattern. We are instructed in order to have good mental health is to be thankful. Gratitude. How many of you make a gratitude list? Have you ever made a gratitude list before? Anybody? This is one of the principles we learned in our depression and anxiety recovery program. That you would, gratitude. And then you were supposed to go about 10 days or so without saying anything negative. And if you said something negative, the clock would have to restart. And you would have to go another 10 days without saying anything negative. Old friends, try it. No complaining, no murmuring. Mm hmm. And if, and if you complain, you got to restart the clock again. The phrase give thanks appears 35 times in the Bible. And friends, in order to be thankful, you must be content. Go to Philippians chapter four. In order to be thankful, I submit to you, you must be content. Philippians chapter four, pick it up in verse 11. Philippians chapter 4, verses 11. Sometimes we don't realize that the mind needs to be swept and clean. It needs attention. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content, Paul said. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer, to suffer need, to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can be hungry in Christ. I can be full in Christ. I can suffer in Christ. I can suffer need in Christ. I could be abased or I could be abound. I am content. Hmm. I give thanks. I show gratitude in whatever earthly, physical situation and condition that I am in. Praise God. Brother Paul was... He's I have learned in whatsoever state I am in therewith to be content. Hmm. Be thankful, friends. You can't be thankful if you're not content. Hebrews chapter 13. We're talking about keeping this big sponge up here healthy. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. Thank you guys for the gifts this morning. Thank you guys for double tapping that screen and sharing this live. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 through 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Watch out. Let your conversation, your behavior be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. 
For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be content with the color of your hair. Be content with the size of your breasts and the size of your butt, the size of your calves. Be content that you have food and clothing. Be content with the home that God has provided you with the vehicle that you are driving. Be content. Be content with the shape and color of your eyes. In the thinness or fullness of your lips, be content with such things as you have. Be content for the family that you have. For he that has said, I will never. Why? Why are you being content with all these things? Because the God of heaven said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hebrews chapter 13, 5 through 6. Come on, beloved. Come on. How can you be thankful? How can you be happy if you're not content? If you're never satisfied with all the goodness that God has given you? 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness, living and imitating God, not imitating, in, Lord have mercy, not imitating superstars, not Im imitating the Kardashians, hmm? Miley Cyrus, N not imitating the rappers, the moguls, the porn stars, the whores, male or female, the models. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Grace and peace. Have a great day at work, my lady. So glad you came by. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Somebody better listen to what we got going on this here this morning. Do you realize no matter what you work for, no matter what you gain, no matter what you build on this earth, you cannot take it with you when you die? I don't care what business you built, children you've had. Family, you you can't take it with you when you die. Your only hope is to pour into souls and meet them again in the resurrection, friends. The point of life. What is the point of life? See, let me tell you what the point of life is. The point of this life is to build a godly character. Mm-hmm. The point of this life is to build a godly character, to put on the mind of Christ, to have the mind change from evil, wickedness to holiness. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, let us be there with content. If you have food and clothing, say amen. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. I think about all the musicians, all the stars who are chasing after money and fame, and they end up worshiping Satan openly. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. They left being Christians because they started chasing money and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Tell me this book, this is not written of God. This is not written of man. This is written of God, friends. No man wrote this. This is a man moved by the Holy Ghost. This is a man moved by the Holy Ghost that wrote this, friends. It's the truth. It pierces the soul. It gets right to the heart and issue of the problem, the love of money. Because you weren't content with the food and clothing and shelter that God gave you, you went seeking after the... Come on. What did the devil... Offer Jesus when he was in the wilderness. Somebody let us know in the chat. What did the devil offer Christ in the wilderness? What 
What did Satan offer Christ? Yes, in the wilderness. He tended him with the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He tended him with presumption. He offered him the world. Everything. He took him onto a high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms. Look at the power of, of Satan. He was able to show Christ all the kingdoms of all the world with all his riches, women, wealth, money. He said, just worship me. I'm the prince of this world. Just worship me and I'll give you the fame. I'll give you a, a way out. Come on, sis. I'll give you, I'll, I'll make it so you don't have to go to the cross. Just, just, I'll give you all these earthly things that are going to ultimately be destroyed when God rains down fire on this planet and purifies the earth and makes a new heaven and a new earth. Friends, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Or what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world? but lose his very own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That verse changed my life. I responded like Sister Sharon did. I said nothing. I was reading the Bible for the first time. I read those words from Christ. It penetrated my mind and my heart, and I responded, nothing, Lord. And then Jesus pulled up to me. He says, are you sure, Gordon? Are you sure that you're not giving anything in exchange for your soul? And I was drinking, smoking, fornicating. Hmm? Ch trying to be in the music industry. Listen, friends, I was trying to be on the, in the music industry. And as soon as God opened my eyes to the truth of his words, Satan then gave me an internship at Bad Boy Record Label. Supernaturally, it happened. I was in the right place at the right time. So I thought. But the devil still gives gifts today. He still makes invitations. The very thing I spent my... Whew, working for, trying to get, come on, man. As soon as Satan saw me going, following Christ, he says, ah, 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 don't leave, don't, don't leave. I'm sorry, Gordon. I didn't mean to keep this from you. Here, here, you can, here, here. And Jesus said to me, will you leave me too? And I said, Lord, where will I go? For you have the words of life. Where will I go, Lord? For you have the words of life. There is nothing this record label, there is nothing this fame can offer me. Listen, beloved, for those of you who have ever performed before on a stage and have had people falling, applauding you, giving you attention, females giving you attention, people of the opposite sex. Fame is, is a powerful drug. Attention is a powerful drug. Many of us are attention whores. Attention and fame and likes is a powerful drug, friends. But the love of Christ is far better. Do you know him, friends? Do you know him? If you don't, I pray you get to know him. Or oh, you don't have to crave it. Sometimes it shows up at your door and you taste it for the first time. And then you get the craving. Meekness. Meekness. Definition. Are you meek this morning, friends? We're supposed to be meek. Softness of temper, mildness, gentleness, forbearance under injuries and provocations. Let me read that definition to you again. Here is the definition of meekness. It's a noun. Softness of temper, mildness, gentleness, forbearance under injuries and provocations. Mm. In an evangelical sense, humility, resignation, submission to the divine will without murmuring 
mm, or peevishness, opposed to pride, arrogance, and refactoriness. Mm. Are you meek, friends? Oh, are we meek? Come on. Are you meek? Mm. Matthew 11, verse 29. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, Jesus said, for I am meek. This is the mind of Christ. I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest for your souls. Many of us do not have peace. Many of us cannot find rest. Many of us do not find rest for our souls because we are not meek. We're not soft. We're not mild. We're not gentle. We don't have forbearance when we're injured. Under provocation. So there's no rest in our souls. We're always defending ourselves. We're always at war. Hmm? We're not, we're harsh and not gentle. We're not mild, we're strong, willed, we're strong willed, strong opinionated. Mouth almighties. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me, not of the world, not of an actress, an actor, not of, learn, not, not of a president, not of someone's ideology, some war general. No, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. When you learn of me, come on, friends, when you take my yoke upon you, you then you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 5, verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Well, by implication, then, those who are not meek shall not inherit the earth. Those who are not meek shall not inherit the earth. Long-suffering, friends, do you have patience? Are you long-suffering? Bearing injuries or provocation for a long time. Patience, not easily provoked. I think about how long Nelson Mandela set up in that jail cell, friends. <sighs> Mercy. I think about all the convicted criminals who didn't do the crime, sitting up in a jail cell. Long suffering, bearing injuries or provocation for a long time, patient, not easily provoked. Some of us are easily provoked. I'm from New York. You look at me wrong and I'm provoked. Come on, man. You look, you look at me, you give me a side eye. You from a big city, you know what I'm talking about. Someone look at you the wrong way and you provoked. You ready to go. You feeling froggy and leap. Come on. Is that the mind of Christ? Is that, is that long suffering? James chapter 1 verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, slow to anger. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Slow. We were told to forbear one another. Forbear means to spare, to treat with tolerance and patience. We are to forbear one another, to spare, to treat with tolerance and patience. We're told to forgive one another. We're talking about the keys to mental health, friends. Forbearance, long suffering. Now we're talking about what? Forgiveness. This is this is hard, friends. Forgiveness is divine. I say it all the time. Forgiveness is divine. If you think forgiveness is just gonna spring out of you, you're wrong. You need to pray about it. You need to ask for it. You need to ask to be able to forgive yourself and to be able to forgive others. It's a divine attribute. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For if we forgive men their trespasses, your for if you forgive men their trespasses against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You remember that parable of the unforgiving servant? He went to the king and said, King, I can't pay you back. I owe you millions of dollars. And the king said, you know what? I, I'll, I forgive you. I forgive you all the millions you owe me. It's forgiven. It's as if you never borrowed it from me. He said, oh, praise the Lord. Thank you. And he left. And then he saw his a friend, a servant, a brother who owed him a, meag a meagerly amount. And he went and choked him. Said, give, give me the money. And threw him into the prisons. When the king heard of this that, this, that this wicked servant didn't show forgiveness to another brother who had done less harm than he had done to the king. Man, throw, throw him into outer darkness. Throw him into, man, this man. You, you, know, you know why that, you know, you, know, you know, one of the reasons why that servant behaved that way because he had not received the forgiveness himself. I believe he was still trying to pay back the king. And he says, no, man, you owe me a few dollars. I got this huge debt I got to pay. He did not receive that he was forgiven. So therefore he was not. Listen, you can have beef with a family member, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter. But when you realize how wicked you are and what evils you've done to Christ and God and that God died for you while you were yet a sinner, while you were yet an enemy of God and you are a recipient of that grace, a recipient of that forgiveness, you know what it does to your heart? It makes you forgive other people who don't deserve to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. That's how the gospel works, friends. That is how the gospel works. That is how the gospel works. When you are truly a recipient of mercy, when you are truly a recipient of forgiveness, it, it makes it impossible for you not to be forgiving because you know how you betray Christ. You know how you've let down God, how you spat in his face and ripped his beard and tore his side. And he's still arms open. You know how you've been the prodigal on the run. Come on home, son. Come on home, daughter. When you receive that type of forgiveness, it makes you forgiving. So, beloved, if we're not forgiving the people, we, got, we need to check ourselves. We need to check ourselves. We need to get alone in our prayer closets. And we need to talk to God. And say, Lord, please give me the new heart you've promised me. I'm begging you, we need to wrestle with God for hearts of meekness and holiness and forgiveness because he's promised it to us. We have to wrestle with God, friends. It, it, it won't come with one little quick prayer. It won't come with a passing thought. We've got to wrestle with God. The mind needs to wrestle with God, Lord, and we need to, we need to hold a, grab a hold of Jesus and not let him go till we receive that new heart. We need to we need to wrestle with him and petition him and bother him and trouble him with the request for a forgiving heart and for love and mercy and kindness until we receive it, friends. We want to give everything else a hundred percent. You know, we'll we'll watch a whole Netflix series. We'll, we'll go to war with somebody. We'll have beef with a co-worker. We'll, 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 we'll spend and expend energy on any and everything else except wrestling with God for a new heart. I'm telling you the truth, friends. Our last point this morning as we close. Mm. Love. I have two things for you in closing. Love. If we don't have a mind of love, we'll fail. Though I speak with the tongues, the languages of men and of angels, and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, 
And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffereth long. It is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth or puffeth not itself up. Love doeth not behave itself unseemly. It is modest. It is respectful. It seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil, O oh love. It rejoiceth not in iniquity. Come on. It's not happy to see murder and sex and adultery on TV and in music and on the internet and on the phones and pornography. It rejoiceth not in iniquity. But it rejoiceth in the truth. It loves the word of God. Love beareth all things. It believeth all things. It hopeth all things. It endureth all things. Love never fails. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. And now it by the faith, hope, charity, which is love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Friends, in closing, are you climbing the Christian ladder this morning? Are you climbing the Christian ladder this morning one rung at a time? Brother Gordon, what do you mean? We just read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But in closing, I want to know if you are climbing the Christian ladder found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Because this is the ascent of mental health in Christ. According as his divine power have given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these great and exceeding precious promises, we might become partakers of the divine nature. How many people this morning want to become partakers of the divine nature? Talk to me, friends. How many of us want to become partakers of the divine nature? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, then, li then listen up, friends. If you want to have become a partaker of the divine nature, you must climb the Christian ladder. You must climb the Christian ladder one rung at a time. And beside this, give all diligence, add to your faith, virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, temperance. To temperance, patience. To patience, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you so you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. He is a Laodicean and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, <coughs> wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Amen? Are you climbing the Christian ladder of mental health this morning? Let me pray for you. Gracious, kind, loving, heavenly Father, forgive us for being so hard-hearted, friends. Lord, forgive us for being so hard-hearted. This morning, we ask that you would have mercy on our wretched souls and that you would remove and take from us these hearts of stone and give us a heart of flesh that has your Ten Commandments and your love written all over it. This is what you said you were going to do, Lord. You said that I will give you a new heart. I will convert you. I will make you new. And Lord, we're coming and surrendering to you this morning that you will fulfill your promises in our lives. Give us the strength in the sight to climb the Christian ladder, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beloved, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., we'll be back for another devotional thought and study together. Tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on TikTok Live, we'll be, we're, we're, we're together again for uh, some live discussion and study. 
Thank you for supporting the ministry. Remember, if you want to support this ministry, you can do so through likes. You can purchase merchandise. You can give the money over at donations over at ghostedandpriest.org. Do not support the fake accounts. Amen. The, the swindlers. <laughs> um, follow us. Instagram. We're trying to get that to a thousand followers over at Instagram. Share these lives. This playback will be available over at YouTube at Ghost and Preach. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at Ghost and Preach. On Rumble, where we have more freedom to speak, is GSP Live over at Rumble. Uh, no Pills Podcast. No Pills Podcast. You can find that on YouTube and also on uh, other streaming services. We're about to launch that. N-O-P-I-L-L-Z, No Pills Podcast. We've got a lot going on this morning. Friends, we can have the victory over the mind. We can put on the mind of Christ by faith. God has promised to give us new hearts. Amen? God has promised to give us new hearts. All right? Friends, so good to see you all this morning. Okay? So good to see you all this morning. I pray that this information will be beneficial to your walk in Christ, to your life of sanctification. And friends, remember, it's not a trend, it's the truth.